Hello, good afternoon everyone. I hope that you had a fabulous, fabulous week. And um, I'm recording this intentionally on International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day, my fellow amazing women. I just want to say that you are enough. You're beautiful, you're powerful, and you're doing great. No matter how much it seems like you're overwhelmed or whatever it might be, you're doing great and you're awesome. Our topic today is centered around the theme of the International Women's Day 2024, which is inspiring inclusion. And I'm also going to be using this topic to encourage each and every one of us today. But quickly, let's take our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we thank you for today. We thank you for this beautiful day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for provision, for protection. We thank you for your amazing grace, for loving us so dearly, for everything that you do for us, even the things that we're not aware of. I set our thanks in Jesus' name as we study your word. Please teach us yourself. We want our eyes to be opened up to new things like and experience them like we have never experienced them before. We thank you because we know you've heard and answered our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So I already said our topic is going to be our teaching rather is going to be centered around the theme for International Women's Day today, Inspire Inclusion. Yes, I am a woman. And of course, I'm going to speak about this. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> but please stay with us because you could also learn a thing or two. Galatians 3 verse 28 says, There is neither Jews nor Gentiles, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. That Bible verse tells me and you that god does not discriminate he doesn't see race he doesn't see color he doesn't see gender if god considers you fit to do a job he will qualify you for the job even if you think you don't have what it takes to do what he's sending you to do if god says that i've chosen this person to do this then by all means it's not going to consider whether you are from a broken home or whether you're a woman or a man, whether you have children or you don't. God doesn't look at all those things. God looks deeper. He searches to the deepest part of the heart of man to see the true state before he chooses people. And today I would like to speak about two very powerful and inspiring women in the Bible. They are my inspiration. The first for me is Deborah. Deborah in the Bible, she is such a huge inspiration. Every time I consider the story of Deborah, I'm like, oh God, like she's just a woman of so many talents, giftings, and, and skill that I just want to be like her. Deborah is the first female judge, and she was a warrior. She was a songwriter and a prophetess. You can see she wears so many hats, and most of these are also leadership roles the story of deborah shows that the lord calls ordinary people to do extraordinary and great things that can only be accomplished through and in christ a lot of people were considered uh, based on i'm talking about by men they were considered by men based on gender they they hardly ever gave women roles worthy of considering they felt that women should be quiet should serve you know but god even in those times when it was common for women to be quiet to learn in quietness to to not lead to not speak in public God chose Deborah to do amazing things. I'm reading that Deborah led men to war. She was a warrior. She wasn't an ordinary woman. And there is nothing great about being ordinary or basic. You want to stand out from the crowd. Deborah led men to war. As strong as I like to think I am, I'm not sure that <laughs> I'm cut out for war. But I want to do the other great things Deborah did. Deborah was an uncommon leader in Bible times. As a woman, God called her to a prominent position as a prophetess, as a judge, as a warrior, and a songwriter. She was the only female judge at the time, and maybe even throughout all the Bible records. She, she was all of this at a time in history when only men assumed this position. It's 
it's amazing it's it's mind boggling like it's it's everything that i want to know that a woman at a time when women were so heavily discriminated against was able to break out of this norm out of this culture of discrimination and still go ahead to do these things it's it's if there's any biblical character i want to meet deborah is certainly one of them god in the case of deborah and several other women in the bible has demonstrated and is still demonstrating till date that he is not biased my god is not a biased god he doesn't care what your but once god is ready to use you and he says it is you there is nothing else that can change that god demonstrated that he's not biased and he is inclusive which is the very theme of international women's day to inspire inclusion and how do we inspire inclusion in our day-to-day -day lives i'm bringing it down to us right now we are no longer in the bible we stepped out of it for a bit at your place of work so um initially when i started working fresh off youth service i joined an it firm and if you know how it was uh around 2010 down to even up till recently it was male dominated there were lots of men you go to in fact at some point the company i was working for to develop a policy to say that we are going to increase the percentage or ratio of men to women because there were more men working in the organization at the time than women and i believe that it's time that when there's a particular industry or space that we're in and you see that you you maybe out of the total number of 50 you only have five women we should start asking questions are, are, are the women being discriminated against are they not employing women for these roles even if the women are able to do it is one thing if the women can't do it for instance uh, mining if so i'm not i'm not unreasonable i know that there are some things that women physically may not be able to do but if a woman says she can mine let her go for it if a woman can code and she can develop websites and she can build amazing structures and houses and buildings you as a person in position of authority or leadership to determine who gets the job if she's qualified by all means let her do it let us stop suppressing let's stop this culture of suppressing women it's not beautiful it's not funk and god doesn't love it i am so sure of that because if God were in support of the policy in Israel in those days or, you know, those many years ago for women not to lead, not to speak in church, he won't use Deborah, he won't use Esther. Esther was a beautiful but humble woman. She was brave and that led her to saving a whole generation of Jews. Our story shows how women can fight their fears and bring glory to God. A lot of women have so many fears fears of the unknown fear of of provision how am i going to get by if i do this if i go for this how am i going to... even in their marriages sadly the marriage should be where a woman should feel safest and not just a woman the man too but um, we're talking about women today sorry sorry guys <laughs> so that is where she should feel safest but a lot of women don't feel safe they feel like if I if I don't do this, even though I know and, and I'm convinced that this is what I am supposed to be doing, if I don't obey what my husband has said in contrary, and because maybe the husband is not he refuses to reason with her, then he's not going to give me pocket money. I, I don't have a job, he's not letting me work. There are so many fears. But you have to fight your fears so that you can truly leave if you are living in fear you are truly and certainly not living esther was an orphan raised by mordecai mordecai was her uncle and mordecai had saved the life of king ahasuerus by giving esther information of the plot to kill him and you know that was recorded in history somewhere but along the line, Mordecai refused to bow to Haman. And because of that, Haman set out a plot to kill not just Haman, but all Jews that were in that territory or that space at the time. And 
Esther, even though she was cared for, like because the way things were then is a bit different. You can't just walk up to the king, even if he's your husband, to start making requests. If the king doesn't summon you or call for you, then you can't. She was cared for her life, but she knew that she had to do something about it. Mordecai was her uncle, and if she did nothing, Haman was ready to kill him and many other Jews. So, in reality, Esther was comfortable in the palace. She could have decided not to care that, oh well, at least I'm not the one getting killed. But she decided, alongside with the Jews, through fasting and prayer for three days before presenting her case before the king. And something very interesting happened, happened. And you know, these things happen. They truly do happen with fasting and prayer. When she presented her case to the king, the king told her that she could have anything she wanted, even up to half of the kingdom. Yo, like, that is insane. And you know, when you follow her story, you think that maybe she'll ask for maybe truly half of the kingdom or so much wealth. But Esther was so selfless. She was so selfless. She was all she had in her mind was the interest of her people and their well-being or their welfare. And she decided to use that blank check to say that there we Jews were scared for our lives. She wasn't out there with them. She was in the past. She was comfortable living a soft life. But she, she, she could empathize with her people. She said, we Jews were scared for our lives. This is Haman's plan. And you know, interestingly, the night before, the king could not sleep. And he was going through records of people that had done good things to him in, in the history since his reign began. And he came across how Mordecai saved his life. Sometimes you have to pray that your helpers will not sleep. <laughs> but recently with my experience of not being able to sleep, I'm starting to think that is that a very Christian prayer? But anyway, he couldn't sleep and he discovered that Mordecai saved him. And he had even asked Aman the night before that, what do you do to people? How do you reward people that have been good or loyal to you? And Aman was saying, oh, give them land, gifts, property and all of that. And he noted it. So when Esther was telling King Ahasuerus that they feel threatened and the ploy is by Haman and Haman was even going to get her uncle of course the king did something about it the very same anger or pull that was going to hang Mordecai to death was what was used to hang Haman and what was used to kill Haman instead what a plot twist I'm praying that for whatever you might be trusting God for. It seems like there is no hope. It seems hopeless, like nothing good is going to come out of it. That plot twists. The way God is going to turn up for you, you are not going to believe it. In Jesus' name, amen. And that was how she saved a whole tribe. <laughs> Give or take or more or less. And Mordecai was, instead of being killed, he got rewards, great rewards, which were mostly even Ammon's properties and lands in the first place. But where am I going? Esther had such a beautiful heart. She wasn't only beautiful on the outside. Remember the king got married to her through a pageant. She was beautiful on the inside. She wasn't selfish. She could have used that opportunity to ask for half of the king's wealth. And maybe she will be the richest woman to have <laughs> lived in Bible times. I don't know. But she used that one wish or request for our people. And that is an example of what we can do as women. We can do great things. We can save generations yet unborn. If only we can just stop being selfish or materialistic or extremely materialistic. Let me put it that way. We can do great and amazing things. And in this spirit of International Women's Day, and going forward, not even beyond this celebration, going forward, International Women's Day, Girls' Day, Father's Day, let us all live our, our lives with the mindset of inclusion. Let's, in our places of work, let's not discriminate. Don't say you want to employ someone that is qualified because they are not from your tribe or because they are disabled or because they have HIV or because the person is a woman or just because 
if they deserve it and you know that they qualify please by all means just let them have the opportunity let us be inclusive in our thinking in our operations in our day-to-day -day life lives it's very important and lastly i want to round this up with uh this is like a special request so years ago or a couple of yes years ago my my boss dr adidola pofashare discovered that i used to use her office <laughs> to do some of these recordings of course when she's not around and i need a quiet space to do it and she said ah nikki you've not even told the people that listen to pray for this your boss <laughs> whose office you always use and i want to say that she is a woman that has been inclusive i have known her for a while even outside of the workspace she is constantly thinking of how to empower women and i'm saying this on international women's day she's constantly thinking of how to empower women how to improve the quality of their lives she has touched me personally and i appreciate that um she's not perfect everybody has their flaws but I, I would always appreciate her for how thoughtful she is. And I just want you all, my friends and listeners, to say a word of prayer to, for her. Uh, she, she wears a very big hat. Leading people in health and environment in the FCT is, is, it can be overwhelming. But she, she does it. She makes it look seamless. And she's even still so pretty while doing it. And so I just want, in our prayer, we'll mention her. And I mean, in your private space, you can, if she has touched you too, because I know some of you, she has probably touched you. If she has touched you, please say a word of prayer for her. Thank you so much for listening in. You can share with me other women that have touched your lives. My mother, my mother is such an inspiration. Pastor Mrs. Oluremi Taiwo. Oh my God, I want to appreciate you today, mommy. A lot of times I am working till late, but my children never have to feel it because of the sacrifice that she makes for me every single day. I don't take that for granted. I love you, mom. I love you, grandma. Thank you for all that you do for me. She was the first example of strength that I ever learned. My mother is strong. So when people say, Nikke, you are so strong, when they hear my story or things I've been through and they say, Nikke, you are so strong, I'm like, <laughs> The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. My mother is a strong woman. She'll wake up very early as early as 4 a.m. I don't enjoy cooking. I know how to cook, but I don't enjoy it. She'll wake up as early as 4 a.m. every single day till I got married. Even after that, every single person that leaves that house lives with own cooked meals. She's so caring. She's such a mother. And I want to say that women in different spaces you are doing amazing whether you're a career woman a businesswoman, a housewife a mother to many children whatever it is you are doing you're amazing and nobody can do it better you are doing a great job don't ever feel like oh i'm wasting away just being a housewife no you're doing a great job you're raising generations in those children if you're in the workspace you are touching lives you are telling children that are yet unborn or even upcoming that you can be a mother and you can work. You can be a woman and achieve great things. Please don't stop. Don't kill the fire. I love you all, my women. You are amazing. Mwah. Love you and God bless you. Happy International Women's Day. Lord, we thank you for today's teaching. Amazing. I, I did not plan for it to be this long, but I guess I'm passionate about us women. And I know that you also are God. You are passionate about us and you love us so dearly. Lord, accept our thanks. I pray that... For everything that we do, that you bless the work of our hands. I pray specifically for women, all women all over the world listening to me right now. Where they need, I don't know why this is coming to me. But where they need strength, Lord, be their strength, be their support, be their pillar, be their encouragement. Be the smile on their faces. A lot of women need strength. Constantly we feel tired and knackered. But you, oh God, are strength. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our beautiful and amazing mothers. Our, our not just biological mothers, spiritual mothers that have stood in the gap for us. We thank you for Sister Ola. We thank you for Dr. Adedola Fashawe. We thank you for Pastor Mrs. Oluremi Taiwo. We thank you for so many women that, that have even bred and fostered great women 
women that are behind the scenes that people don't see but have been the support of many great women today we thank you for women in leadership we thank you for women and children all over the world thank you for our men to the good men that have been strong pillars of support to amazing women lord we thank you we thank you for keeping us all in your love accept our thanks in jesus name we pray that you bless us all and let your mercies and grace encompass us at all times in jesus mighty name we're afraid amen i love you bye